Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a project update video for this 1.6 scale ArmorTech radio controlled German King Tiger heavy tank. Since the last video, a lot of progress has been made to the turret's roof detailing as well as also several of the other turret hatches and we'll be going over all of this information in this video. So stay tuned because there's going to be a bunch of content coming right at you. One of the first stops in order to finish off the turret is to assemble the rear escape hatch. The rear escape hatch that's supplied with the armor tech kit are comprising of basically the parts that we see here on the table. There are one or two parts that are not present, but basically you get the gist. The design of the parts here are basically what you see on all of the armor tech king tigers that have been released up to the point that we have here. Just like on all armor tech components, the pieces are fabricated in much along the same exact ways. You'll see an abundant use of CNC aluminum turnings. While I believe on the original one, these two sections here may have been made from steel, but the piece themselves are basically the same. Starting with the largest component that we have right here, this is the main escape hatch itself. The piece is a solid section of about three quarters of an inch or maybe a half an inch thick of aluminum alloy. The piece does have the appropriate shape and geometry for the King Tiger rear escape hatch. It has the tapered bevel to it that you see here. The hole in the center is present for the pistol port, which is also supplied with the model, but it's not shown on the table. That piece is just a basic aluminum turning that plugs and drops directly into this location over here. On the bottom portion, we have the hinge protective block, which on the real unit would have a taper to it, and it would be a welded section directly to this area here. The area for the handle is drilled out. And just like what is commonly seen on most of the Armor Tech models out there, the inside portion here is completely blank and doesn't have any sort of interior detailing that is present. Also on the table, we have here the little, oops, the little handle, which is made from a bent piece of aluminum rod. This is pre-bent to the shape that you see here. And the piece does fit into the section with a minor amount of hand fitting. Basically, yep, see there, I was able to just muscle it into the point that you see here. So the piece itself, it's nicely shaped and this will be utilized on this build. Here we have the hinge sections, which are made from a single turning of CNC aluminum. It is pre-drilled and does have the appropriate geometry to it. However, the hinge itself is a bit tight in its tolerances on these areas over here. And this is something that a little bit of hand fitting is going to be required in order to get the piece to fit on properly. Along with the hinge, we also have the main, I believe these would be torsion bars on the real King Tiger, but on the model here, these are two extended rods made from aluminum. They do have some tooling marks on them, so it couldn't hurt to polish them a little bit on the lay just to smooth them out. They are drilled out, and the pins are also supplied. However, they're not present on the bench here. The pins basically just look like you're standard steel pin and are nicely machined. They'll just get tapped into place and once everything is assembled the pin secure the torsion bar, the hinge, as well as the hatch all in line with each other. Another kit supply detail that's for this area of the build consists of these three steel turnings. These are the turret bosses which are on the real vehicle are actually used to erect a collapsible crane in order to get access in removing some of the heavy bits on the engine deck. Well, on the Armor Tech kit, they are supplied with these three pieces, which are made from CNC turnings of steel and are all pre drilled and they have their countersunks to them. Unlike several of the other parts I've already talked about in this video, these pieces I am actually going to use and I'm basically just going to install them out of the box. Of course, there are some other things we're going to be adding to them, namely just weld beads as well as adding a little bit of putty on the inside to plug up the fastener, but other than that, these pieces here are pretty much good to go. The next detailing found on the roof of the King Tiger is the spent shell ejection port. On the Armor Tech kit, it's comprising of three components. We have here the main piece, which is just a CNC'd aluminum hatch. There is also a CNC'd aluminum hinge, and then a steel pin, much along the lines of the rear escape hatch that I touched upon before. The next bit of detailing that's going to be mounted is the close quarter defense weapon. This is an iconic bit of detailing found on German tanks from the later half of the war. The armor tech component 
consists of the piece that we have here. It is a single turning of CNC aluminum that has the overall basic look and shape of the close quarter defense weapon. We have here a nice little taper around the edge. We have the provisions with, for the flush mounted fasteners and the unit is rendered in the open position. The same bit of detailing is present on just about all of the armor tech vehicles that have this type of fitting that is present. And just like with the spent shell ejector hatch, I actually utilize this on my other King Tiger tank as well as some of the other builds that have been shown on this channel in the past. However, for this build here, I'm going to be doing something different. Rather than going with the kit supply one, I'm going to be swapping it out with this white metal aftermarket one here from Armor Packs. The Armor Packs unit can be purchased through the link listed right here with the magic of editing as well as also found in the video description listed below. The Armor Packs piece is made out of white metal and I've utilized his pieces on several other builds in the past for really good reason. Their quality of the parts are always excellent and top notch. The piece, like I said before, is a white metal alloy and it is offered in two different formats. This one here is the closed variant while he has another option that has this section open, just like the Armor Tech one that we have here. Note this one does have some excellent detailing found on the surface. We have here the countersunk flathead fasteners and the piece has a wider taper to it making it a little bit more prototypical compared to the standard armor tech one. The piece still drops directly into place however just like with my other builds I'm going to be doing something with the system here. Rather than just gluing it in the static state I'm actually going to be hooking it up to a servo so that it can pivot giving the model a little bit more animation. As on the real vehicle this unit here can fully rotate in order to get a 360 degree access to the vehicle in case the need be ever arose. The next big piece of detailing that's going to be mounted to the turret at this time is the loader's hatch. Here you can see what the kit supplies you with. Just like with the other parts I touched upon, it is comprised of a single piece of CNC aluminum. Also supplied but not present here are the little hinges that go on the end as well as the pins to make everything fully function. The hatch does have some provisions for interior detailing that we have the points here for the handles as well as also I believe some kind of a faux crank handle or something for the inside. It doesn't really matter because I'm not going to be utilizing this on this build. In its place, I'm going to be utilizing a white metal aftermarket component from Armor Packs. This component here is another accessory that is highly recommended for anyone who's working on not just the King Tiger, but also a late pattern Tiger one as well. You can see that the piece is very nicely detailed. It even has the little mill lines here that are found on the bevels which would be present on the real unit not to mention all of the provisions weld marks and all the other good stuff but most importantly it has all of the interior detailing that is present the armor packs piece is literally a direct replacement for the armor tech section which is fantastic which means getting the hinges to fit into their appropriate locations should be something that will take very little effort one other little quick fact I want to point out about the Armortech kits in general is that for the previous generations of Armortech King Tiger, this hatch here was supplied out of the box with the kits. So from the first and second generation of Armortech King Tiger releases, this piece was something that was standard equipment. As the years progressed, rather than supplying you with these components here, Armortech decided to tool up and just supply you with their own basic parts which is what we'll see on more contemporary armor tech releases so this is important to note because if you have an older generation armor tech king tiger either you purchased it second hand in an unassembled state or you have one just sitting in your stash and you're or finally about to start it keep in mind if you have a vehicle from that era the acquisition of the replacement hatch is not necessary Circling back to the hatch, you'll see that, like I mentioned before, the interior section is completely plain and there's nothing present on this area over here. And on the real King Tiger, there's actually quite a bit of detailing found on this part. So, in typical ECA fashion, I went ahead and developed a detail insert for specifically the Armortech King Tiger rear escape hatch. These pieces here are a new addition to the ECA product line and consists of, well, 3D printed components. The first is the actual insert itself. It's a quite a substantial printing, but it has all of the detailing present which would be found on the real unit. This would include both the geometry as well as also with 
several of the detail fittings. The handlebar is integrally printed on with its welds present, and the welds are also seen on several of the other units that are found on the printing. Note these two dished out sections over here. These are for the use of fasteners, which is how the unit's going to be mounted in place. Just like on the King Tiger detail insert, this unit is, is mounted in the exact same way where you drill and tap two fastener location holes, and then with a cap screw, you just thread everything in place, which will secure the insert to the hatch, making it one piece. Now that's just for the the main insert itself. What's also supplied is what's found on this runner that we have here, which are all of the detail components which would be needed to fully flesh out the rear escape hatch. Starting with the biggest part, we have this hinged plate. The plate itself is spring retained and that spring retention clip is also present on the runner. The piece is fully hinged, as you can see here, the sections are integrally printed, drilled out. And here go the corresponding sections right here on the printing. These two large handles are the lugs that secure the hatch to the vehicle in the closed state. And that's what these two large sections are for right here and here. Also present are a few more little fittings. Like for instance, we have right here the main pistol port plug. This is a straight up replacement for the stock original unit. It does have the appropriate geometry to it. And on the real unit would connect to the hatch with this elaborate locking chain retained mechanism, which is again, all present on the runner here. And you'll see exactly what it looks like once the unit is fully assembled. This large bracket that we have over here is the detail for the exterior portion of the hatch that I touched upon before. On the real King Tiger, you would have this tapered lump of steel which would be welded in this place and it would have some geometric cuts to it. Well, on the Armortech one, it's very simplistic in its overall shape. It's enough to get by, but to further enhance it further, you have this detail insert right here, which simply just glues directly onto the Armortech one, giving you the more appropriate appearance of the armor section that I just touched upon. On the spent shell ejection port, as you can see, it gives you the basic overall shape and size of the detailing in question. The piece is pretty robust, nice and thick, but you'll notice that there are no interior details whatsoever found on the bottom portion. And you are also missing a few other small little fittings like the rain gutter guard, as well as the hatch stop that would be found on the real unit. This piece here is not unusable. In fact, on my King Tiger, I actually polished one of these up and that's the piece that's found on that model. However, for this one here, I went ahead and decided to replace it with my own detail component. This set here is a new addition to the ECA 1.6 scale King Tiger catalog and it's the, well, spend shell ejection port set. The set consists of all of the components to assemble the spend shell ejection port. Where this set is more further enhanced compared to the basic Armortech one is with the overall shape and geometry of the hatch. You note it has the appropriate taper that's found. The hinge is also more prototypical to the real unit, as well as with the design of the hinge. On the Armortech one, the hinge was just one piece, while on the real King Tiger, it was actually two separate sections that were welded to the roof of the vehicle. Aside from the hinges, other details that you'll find with the set is the gutter, as well as also the hatch stop. All of the details that are found have their weld beads integrally printed on, so it's one less thing that the builder needs to sculpt. Also, unlike the Armor Tech piece, the ECA one does have the interior detailing. Now, the interior detailing on this hatch here is actually very, very simplistic. It consists of a long threader rod and this weird wonky antenna looking like fastener. It's kind of like a wing nut, I guess, with these two really long stems coming out where obviously the crewman can grab onto them with his hands to close or loosen the fastener in order to open the hatch. Having said that, I think it's a really bad design because I really don't want to be walking around on the or moving around on the inside of this vehicle here with these really long steel prongs sticking out. It kind of looks like the type of thing that will hurt. And Germans, the World War II German tankers didn't exactly have helmets. Um, but that's, you know, that's neither here nor there. The piece has this really long threaded rod emerging from the center portion of the hatch. And then this unit here would just simply thread over it. 
For the threaded rod, I'm going to be including a M3 fastener. Not this one, this one's a bit of a shorter one. This is just the closest one I had on hand. But the M3 fastener is going to be supplied with the set, so you get the nice detailing of the threads with the nice detailing found on the remainder of the 3D printed components. This section over here is just the hinge pin that's used to, you know, have everything hinged together. If you want to use this one or replace it with a metal one, it's really the builder's choice. Another really important bit of detailing found on the King Tiger roof is the air blower. The air blower that's supplied with the Armor Tech kit consists of this component that we have here, which is a single turning of CNC aluminum, and there's another piece, which is a laser cut piece of steel that this sandwiches together with. The piece is decently rendered. In fact, again, this was the exact same component that I used on my own King Tiger build when I built it all those years ago. However, since the years of that build, I went ahead and tooled up my own lay pattern German AFV tarp blower detail set. The ECA one is improved in many aspects from the original Armor Tech one, where if we look on the interior, we have the appropriate detailing of the little standoff sections, as well as also the fastener details. Of course, this is an older piece now being cast resin and all of my newer pieces from henceforth are 3D print. However, this component here is still on the catalog and it's still something that is in production and will stay in production for a period of time until eventually the molds wear out, to which then, when they do, I'll go ahead and replace it with a 3D printed counterpart. But until that day happens, this one here is the one that's going to be staying in production. Right now the part is going through its final bit of assembly where I went ahead and deburred the components. On the bottom here there is a pouring basin that I sanded off with the belt sander, and I also went ahead and snipped away the sprue for the pouring basin for the top portion as well. I went ahead and drilled everything out and put the little slot screw fasteners in their appropriate locations. And by the way, the production ones that are sold on the catalog, the, dr the holes are drilled out and the fasteners are supplied, but the builder is responsible for deburring both of these components, which again is basically part and parcel when you're dealing with cast resin parts. After a few drops of glue, the top is permanently affixed to the piece, and now you really get to appreciate the detailing found on the component. From here, it just simply gets dropped onto the roof of the model now. And here you can see what the hatch looks like now fully assembled. All of the kit supply components were utilized and they went on without any problems. These armor pack sets really do assemble quite well. And when they're done, do have some fantastic end results. The hatch gear system is totally static. However, I have seen individuals out there who are crazy enough to actually make them work. And it's something that has been done. For this one, however, it's just not going to be necessary. Also, as was seen on several other armor pack sets and even some of my tutorials on this channel where I assemble using a soldering iron, for this one over here that just wasn't the case. Standard super glue was utilized and as for longevity, well, I had this exact same hatch that was assembled in the same manner on my King Tiger in my personal collection and that model now is over 11 years old and one thing that I never ever ever had an issue with was any of the parts working loose on them. So I'm pretty confident that this hatch here will be able to last for many years to come. On the exterior you can see how the piece looks and here go the little hinges. These of course are going to be pinned on after everything is fully primed and painted which is the next step for this hatch. And the other thing that is supplied that's not seen at this point is the padlock receptacle which gets secured to the roof of the vehicle. And once in place it allows you to use a nice little padlock to prevent anyone from getting inside of your tank. I'm not sure how long that will last in Detroit but you get the idea. And after a couple minutes here you get to see the hatch fully assembled and at this point it's actually ready for painting. But then again it's not too surprising being that it is a rather simplistic piece after all. And it just hit me that when you look at the hatch in this white material in this angle, it kind of resembles something from Star Trek. Anyway, uh, with the Enterprise out of the way, here you get to see what the interior detailing actually looks like. Here's that threaded rod that I touched upon before. It's been permanently affixed to the hatch, and you get to see the fastener now in its place. As you can see, the fastener is fully functional. However, to get the unit to work in this manner, you do have to cut the threads with an M3 tap simply done and then once you're finished you'll be able to have the piece work in this format. Some people are probably wondering, John, how does this actually secure to the roof of the turret? Well, on the inside of the King Tiger there's this hinged 
bracket system that would go in this area over here and then you would tighten this fastener in place which would then secure it to the roof preventing you from opening it from the outside. Even though the threads are not cut into the piece here it's not mandatory in order to assemble the component in a static configuration. One last detail I do want to touch upon is on the inner portion of the hatch you will see the well beads that have been integrally printed as well which again gives you a little bit more detailing for this component. And here's the hatch with all the components now fitted. Well, not necessarily all the components, but I'll touch upon that in a second. If I move the lugs out of the way, you can see the piece hinged down. And here we have the complete interior detailing for the King Tiger's rear escape hatch. And this is really where you get to see some of the German-ness in, the, in this design. Also, what's functional are the actual locks themselves. The way the King Tiger hatch would secure in place is with these two massive bolts that we have on either side and basically all you do is just grab the handle and slide them into their appropriate locations when the hatch is closed. These two lugs will just simply engage on the interior portion of the vehicle and this will prevent the hatch from flopping over during operation. To open it up you simply just grab the, the little lever here, pull inward and then the piece is free to hinge open. For the pistol port, this is actually something that's a very unique design, and I'm pretty sure it's like this on several other vehicles, like the Tiger 1, I, I, the later versions specifically, had this exact same setup. To open up the pistol port, it's retained by this weird lug fastener type system, where you have this large clasp, and this is held in place with just this giant uh, loop of seal rod which there's a retention chain which will be added by the way after it's painted but basically there's there's this gigantic ring that would be in the section over here which holds the chain the chain also connects to another steel loop connected to the pistol port itself the whole unit is locked in place by this weird locking bolt here which just puts tension on the rear portion of the hatch in order to take out the pistol port you would undo this little setup, setup over here after a few turns, it would swing open, and then the pistol port would simply just drop directly out, and the chain would be held so that the piece can just dangle on the outer portion of the vehicle like so. Very unique, very interesting, and this design is really only seen on German tanks. I believe the Russians probably did this too. But it's, you know, it's not really done on, on some of the Allied vehicles. Like, the Americans definitely didn't do anything like this. The... Next interesting aspect of this design is that that giant steel ring is what's keeping this piece in and preventing it from falling out. It's, again, very unique. Now, another very interesting aspect of the King Tiger's rear hatch design is with this hinge plate that we have here that honestly serves a function that I don't really know what it does. It just basically hangs over here, and when the hatch is closed, it like rests on the inside and then when the hatch opens it bridges the gap what's also pretty cool is that it has this locking lug here that there is actually a spring in this area that i'll be adding momentarily this spring actually holds this thing in place just like so when not in use and it basically keeps this in the closed state but what i found is that it doesn't really work if you have the pistol port engaged in place this, this unit here makes contact with it and it prevents it from closing i presume this is so that you can have the pistol port open and then you could close this piece here but i again it if anyone does out there know in youtube land feel free to put that in the comments section but basically what you see here is exactly what i was copying off of the real vehicle so that even though i might not necessarily know how it works or what it does it definitely does look like this on the real vehicle and also what's unique is with this Mickey Mouse ear shape over here, the two little toggles can just go right down this position over here and has the appropriate clearance. Again, very interesting design, and it's one that is, by the most part, fully functional here on the East Coast Armory component. One other thing that I do want to mention involves the block here that I touched upon before. You can see with the piece added how much more improved the piece looks, giving a little bit more standoff detailing which is more appropriate for this vehicle. From this point onward I could progress on the next leg which will be getting this thing ready for painting. To do that I am going to be sculpting some well beads into these locations over here as this block here was a separate piece from the steel hatch and it was just simply welded in place so those welds are going to be necessary. 
on the inside here, there's no welds that are going to be needed, but I am going to need the same epoxy to plug up the two fastener location holes that are on either end, because obviously these would not be present on the real vehicle. With the way I designed this piece, you'll notice that the fasteners are nice and deeply recessed into this section here, which means the application of the epoxy filler of whatever type you use can easily be done and can be sanded away nice and flush without the worry of the fastener protruding through the top portion, which is something that makes it difficult to polish away. Also, if you want to fabricate a plug of one sort or another, this can also be done, but you know, that is best left up to the builder's discretion. For the installation of the loader's hatch, like I stated before, the hatch itself does fit very well into its appropriate location. However, the hinges are slightly smaller compared to the ones found on the Armored Pack's hatch. So to enlarge it, I'm basically just doing it by hand and I'm using the Dremel with the high speed removal bit. And this is doing a really good job with removing the excess amount of material. Obviously you want to carefully mark the amount of material that gets removed just so you remove just enough and by doing that, the piece doesn't look out of place or anything. So, once the material is removed, it will look more like this one that we have here on the corner. Another thing that needs to be done besides the widening of the hinge receptacle holes is to also drill out a new hole found for the mounting peg found on the armor pack's piece. As the ones that are found on the model here are not going to fit the armor pack's hinge. The armor pack's hinge emerges slightly above this unit over here. So with the drill press, you could just drill out the two new holes and the piece should just drop right into place. And after a little bit of dry time, here go the hatches fully painted and weathered. And at this point, they're actually ready for installation. I guess we could start from left to right. Here we have the spent shell ejection port. Nothing really much to talk about over there. The loader's hatch. And one thing that I do want to mention on the loader's hatch is that the Tiger and the King Tiger pattern of loader's hatches both have a rubber gasket that run along the outer rim here of the hatch itself. And this detailing is integrally molded into the armor packs piece. However, it's one of those details that a lot of people out there tend to forget or not even know about. So, you know, you'll see hatches out there where everything is just overpainted with the yellow. But if you really want to make your model shine with a fine paintbrush with a little bit of flat black paint, just go ahead and paint the detailing of the rubber gasket and it'll really improve the look of the model overall. From the lower hatch takes us to the escape hatch and here you get to see what it looks like now fully completed. Here's that little spring mechanism I was talking about before. And you can also see the, the paintwork done on the locking lugs and also on the pistol port. If I loosen this up a little bit piece should drop right out from the rear end as it would on the real unit. With the rear escape hatch painted and ready for installation, I decided to revisit the rear torsion bar extension tubes. Here you get to see the two tubes back on the table. This one here is still left stock. I haven't went ahead and made any changes to it yet. However, this one here has been revised. The first thing and the most noteworthy thing that I did was I refined the surface. This one here still has some tooling marks left over from the CNC process, while this one here I went ahead and refined it. This was done by taking the unit, spinning it on the lathe, and while spinning I went ahead and hit the surfaces up and down with some fine sandpaper. Aside from that, I went ahead and added this little groove in this section as well as a small little hole. On the real unit, this is just basically like a jacket and you would have an end cap found on this section and there's this small little hole there which I believe is used for a small fastener that keeps everything in place. But if anyone does know, feel free to mention that. By adding these two details here, you could greatly see how much it improves the stock tube compared to the original and without really a whole lot of effort. Now granted to do this procedure you are going to have to have a lathe or possibly even putting this in your drill and putting in the vise if that's the best you have but the lathe is definitely the best way to go about this procedure. Another thing that I did was and it's an internal thing I actually drilled out the unit 
deeper compared to the stock original. I found that the stock original one, it does hold it in place, but in my opinion, it's a little on the looser end. So in order to make it a little bit more rigid, I drilled it out deeper and I'm going to make a longer pin. This will give more structure and more support to the piece, keeping it in place in a more secure manner. Obviously, to drill this out, this is another procedure that has to be done really on the lathe. And here's the close support weapon now mounted to the vehicle's roof. And like I stated before, the unit is fully functional where it can pivot. In order to do this, there's some magic going on behind the curtain. And let me just go ahead and show that. What you see here is a servo connected to the EastCoastArmory.com pivoting periscope device. This unit is a cast resting piece I developed a number of years ago specifically for this type of an application. So far this is the first vehicle, I should say this is the first German vehicle that I utilized the device on. In the past I utilized this on a radio controlled Sherman Firefly and of course that project can be found on the channel. But the system works in the exact same manner. Basically we have a rest and mount that secures to the vehicle's roof, a servo that mounts directly to the mount, and then from here you have the provisions, namely the servo stars, that connect to a spindle that connects to the implement that's being rotated, and in this application it's the close quarter defense weapon. Here you can see the unit pivoting, and note for this one I went ahead and utilized a two control bar system as opposed to the one because with the dual bar you get a little bit more control or I should say a little bit more strength to throw the unit and plus it throws it in an even manner because you have power being placed on the component in two directions. The spindle itself, you can't really see it because obviously it runs through this section over here, is the cast one that's supplied with the ECA piece and in order to secure it to the armor packs component, a hole is drilled in the center of the white metal piece and then it is tapped. A corresponding hole is drilled in the center column and that too is tapped and then a threaded rod is used to secure everything together. We have a little spacer over here because of the width of the turret's roof over here, the spacer was required in order to get everything to properly fit. The ECA device is something that needs to be custom tailored to each application, so it's not exactly a drop in one size fits all, but it is a much simpler system compared to trying to fabricate or scratch build a pivoting system like you would have to do here in case this component here wasn't used. As for the system, this will be patched into either the gun elevation or the turret rotation channel so that when you operate the channel, the unit will be fully functioning. This is the exact same type of systems that's used on the other ancillary accessory animation details that have been showcased on this channel in the past, namely the driver's periscope as well as the bow pivoting machine gun. By going with the piggyback option, this is a great way to add extra animations and features to your model without the need of adding any extra channels. And when you have a model like this one here, channels, specifically free channels, become a luxury that get used up very, very quickly. And here's the rear armor plate of the vehicle. At this time, the two kit supplied hinges have been mounted in place. As we can recall, there are two threaded fasteners that emerge from this plate and with the way the kit is designed you have to assemble the turret with those fasteners protruding outward. Theoretically when I was building the model I should have pre-installed these parts at the time of the turret assembly but I was still able to make do specifically since the fasteners were glued in the protruding state. Why this is important is that when you're threading them on the piece will thread on without the fastener spinning on you which can cause some problems. But fortunately for this build here I did not run into that. One thing that I did run into however with the fasteners was that they were slightly longer than they really needed to be and why this is relevant is because when you put the hinges on and it, it comes time to put the pins in the a little bit of the fastener protrudes into the area where we have that hole which will block the pin from sliding through. What I had to do was I actually had to remove the hinge carefully and then I went ahead and amputated the section that needed to have been removed. Once those sections were removed I was able to then re-thread the pieces back on carefully I might add because again you don't want to over torque it so the adhesive snap and then you're just left with a partially threaded on piece that just spins and you know to nothingness. Uh, luckily again I was able to not have that happen. I was able to get everything threaded on. Red Loctite of course was used and then once fitted in place 
the alignment was checked and sculpted weld beads have been added. Here we have the hatch as well as the torsion bar pins. Here you can see that the pins have been really lengthened in order to better fit inside the recess here of the newly drilled torsion bar arms. And again, this will give a little bit more support and actually a lot more support and will prevent these pieces from popping off potentially. So with that out of the way, I can go ahead and thread these on. Threading though is actually a really poor term for this, just basically insert them. And as you can see, the hatch closes as it should. The torsion bar arms are nice and, and strong. And from this point here, the installation is theoretically complete. One thing I do want to point out is exactly how good the clearance are with the hatch as well as with the ECA insert that I touched upon before. Note, I can open up the hatch freely without the hatch making any sort, or I should say the intersection, making any sort of contact with the hatch well area, which is absolutely crucial when you're doing a procedure like that. If the piece is off center or if the piece is mounted on in a canted manner, you're going to run into a really bad surprise when it comes time to close the hatch. Another thing I want to point out, and it's actually a benefit to the King Tiger design as opposed to the Tiger 1. One thing that has always been a bit of a pain on the Tiger 1s with the escape hatch is that because of the vertical side of the Tiger 1, when you're putting on the escape hatch, it always, without fail, just wants to open up due to the weight of the hatch with the lower portion with that hinge. There are some ways to remedy it. Unfortunately, the best way to do it is with, well, the actual locking tab as it is on the real vehicle. And when you do that, you're not exactly going to be able to open the hatch from the outside. You actually have to open it from the inside as you would as a crew member. Well, the King Tiger here is fortunate because of with the way the rear turret is shaped with that front leaning angle. The hatch is leaning forward and because of that, will hardly ever, if at all, actually, come to think of it, it never opens up when the vehicle is in operation. So that's one real positive note. Uh, another thing specifically on this hatch here is that these lugs can actually emerge outward and secure to the vehicle as it would on the real vehicle. On that note, however, I quickly found out that my piece here is slightly thicker than it should be on the real vehicle. I went ahead and made the adjustments to this and you can see that right here in this section via the magic of editing the new ECA redesigned piece and that piece is the one that's going to be the production run. This one here works perfectly fine for what it is and unfortunately with the scale one you're not going to be able to lock the units to the turret because on the real tiger or the real king tiger there are little slots machined into the armor which are clearance for the lugs to protrude outward and to lock everything in place. And that basically wraps up the rear area. However, there is one more thing that I need to address with the rear plate. And it involves both the faster location holes found on the either side as well as the welds. However, I'm going to be going over in more detail about that work in the next video update because it also involves a little bit of detailing that needs to be added to these two sections here, the torsion bars. If you know King Tigers, you'll probably know what I'm talking about, but I'll leave that for the next video update. And here's the roof placed back onto the model. And here you get to see some of the details now that have been completed. Starting with the shell ejection port, it is fully functional as you can see, and some of the other details have been added. Let me bring the camera in closer so you get a better look of it. With the camera brought in, you get to see and appreciate some of the details now in better light. For instance, the hatch stop as well as the rain gutter. The hatch stop, in order to install that, you just drill a 16 of an inch hole directly into the plate and then the piece just drops directly in place. Adhesive is really all that's required to secure it. Same is also true for the rain gutter. As for the hatch, well, as you can see, it opens and closes without any problems, and once closed, it sits nice and flush on the turret surface, as it would on the real vehicle. Directly next to it, you can see the boss that has been added. The sculpted weld beads have been added. However, I went ahead and made some slight changes to the geometry that I didn't touch upon before when I showed the pieces in their raw condition. One thing that is relevant to point out though on the bosses mounted on the rear and on the front is with their shape. Note with the way the King Tiger's herd is designed, we have a front slope and a rear slope, but the bosses themselves, the top portion is completely straight. If you mount the parts just stock out of the box, they will match the angle here found on both of these panels, which will throw off the look of the model. In order to improve the piece, on the belt sander, I just simply ground 
or I should say sand it the angle on the bottom portion, and once done, you get the appropriate shape that you see here. Obviously, this is true for the one on the front, the one on the rear, but the one in the center over here next to the loader's hatch was left untouched. It was just secured to the model as is, with the exception of the little sculpted wall beads that I touched upon before. One other change I made was with the way they are secured to the model. With the way the kit is designed, each of these is held on with a single cap screw. The cap screw does a great job of keeping everything in place, but can detract slightly from the look of the model, because if you look over here, you're going to see a giant cap screw on the inside, and that's just not present on the real vehicle. In lieu of using the cap screw, I went ahead and took an M3 hex bolt, and on the grinder, I ground off the little hex sections, basically turning the piece into a cylinder. This was then used to secure the part to the tank, but on the outside here, it looks completely flush, and there's no fastener that's really present, or something that's really that noticeable. From there, it takes us to the loader's hatch. Here you get to see what the piece looks like mounted to the vehicle, and like I touched upon before, the hinge section modifications were completed. The piece just drops directly into place with no problems really to be mentioned. Here you can see the little padlock receptacle that I touched upon before. And once everything is closed up, it just matches and blends in with the detailing as it should. Directly from there it takes us to the air blower and this is now that same component that I touched upon before but is fully assembled and now secured to the model. After it was mounted, I sculpted some weld beads around that area, thus completing that bit of detailing. The next thing I just want to briefly touch upon are the lift hooks that are found on the front as well as on the rear. The kit does have these sections integrally drilled into the plate, however, in my opinion, they're a bit on the smaller side, and to my eye, it seems like they could be just a little bit bigger. So, to fabricate new ones, I am just going to drill a new hole into the plate in a new location, but to do this, one of these sections here are not going to be used, so I just plugged it up at this time with the epoxy. After the epoxy sets, I'm just going to go ahead and sand it away so it's nice and flush, drill the new hole, and then I could fabricate the new lifting hooks. Also at this time, the next biggest bit of detailing I'm going to be adding to the turret will be the Commander's Cupola, but more information on this is to come in the next video update. Along with that, there are a few other details that are going to be mounted to the turret, like the vein sight, the optic that's found on the front, as well as a few other little gizmos. All of this information is going to be discussed in more depth in the next video update because, well, I've actually designed those in a 3D printed format and currently they're on their way to the shop from the printer. So as soon as they're in hand, I'll be able to fit them to the tank and basically get that bit of detailing wrapped up as well. And with that, that wraps up this project update video for this 1-6 scale ArmorTech radio-controlled German King Tiger heavy tank. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to this channel where it's a great way to keep up to date on new posted content being 1-6 scale project update videos like this one over here or the other smaller scale model showcase videos that frequently get posted to this channel. Another way to keep in loop a new posted content is by liking us on Facebook. There I have more photographs of this particular build that have been posted since the project start as well as you will also see photographs of many of the other smaller and larger scale builds that have been showcased on this channel in the past. Furthermore, don't forget to swing by eastcoastarmory.com for more 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds and detail components. Thanks again. I'll see everyone again on the next one. Take care.